Ephraim Salam, 13 years in the NFL, and uh, he's an analyst, and he's with us here on Tiki and Tierney. Ephraim, how you doing today, bud? What's happening? I'm, I'm, I'm good. How you guys doing? Doing okay. Um, the <laughs> Boy, I don't really even know where to start because there's a lot to get to. Uh, Aaron Rodgers getting booed, and oh, I guess let's start with that game. When you watch okay. the Packers uh, this season in totality, not just yesterday, but the whole shebang, what are you seeing from Rodgers? Uh, what, what's, something's off. What's wrong with Aaron Rodgers? Well, you got to think back. This isn't the first year it's been like this. You remember the whole relaxed thing? It's all, it, for the last couple of years, it's always been something. You know, when, when Jordy Nelson went down, I was like, okay, well, he doesn't have his favorite guy to throw to. Um, you know, they don't have enough pieces around them. But even though Aaron Rodgers is still one of the elite quarterbacks in this league, it's just something not quite right. He doesn't look comfortable in the pocket. Of course, they've had offensive line problems. But usually Aaron Rodgers is the type of, of quarterback who can escape from from pressure and still make big plays down the field. We're not seeing that from him right now. And it's a bit perplexing because you, you're scratching your head like, okay, he's still in his prime. He still has weapons to throw to. He still has command of the offense, but he's just not producing. And as I watched the game yesterday, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, like what is going on right now? Like, you're at home. You're playing against two offensive rookies who are outshining you by far, and they just can't seem to get on the same page, and I don't know what that is. You think it's age? You think, Or you think it's a, a coaching situation? Remember last year? Uh, from it was who's calling the plays and Mike McCarthy giving right. it over. I mean, it's like all these things that this this normally stead and stoic Packers team and, and its schemes, it just it started changing, and I don't know why, but do you think that had something to do with it? Uh, it, it, it quite possibly, but uh, someone like Aaron Rodgers, who's been in this system for that long, yeah. and who is considered one of the elite quarterbacks, it's not really play calling because he has the option and the ability to see something and, and, and pick his own play. We all know that. Like, yeah. he can call his own play. So it's not that. I, I think it has a lot to do with the aging defense, a defense that uh, once put a lot of pressure on people and allowed the Packers to play from ahead. Now they're not really doing that anymore. So now you find yourself having to have ball control, having to eat up clock, having to score points every time you're in, in the red zone. And it just seems to be – you know, tougher than in, in years past and an inconsistent running game and an inconsistent offensive line has really put a lot of pressure on Aaron Rodgers and he's just not ringing the bell. Uh, how good was that performance in Seattle by, I know he lost, but Matt Ryan, three touchdowns in the quarter. Um, you know, I said to Tiki early in the show here, Ephraim, that last year they were 5-0 and and I think we all kind of knew that they were a little bit soft. This year they're four and two, and I know that they're not quite dominant defensively by any stretch, but the guts of this team uh, certainly are more solidified. I thought in defeat we learned a lot about the Falcons yesterday, a lot of good. Oh, and and we need that from them because when they get off to hot starts and when they're blazing down, they seem to fizzle out a little bit. For some reason, I was talking about it yesterday on the radio show. Like I'm, I'm almost ready to buy into them, but not quite yet because we've seen this from them before. I know one thing, Matt Ryan is, is stepping his game up. Him, Julio Jones, and that offense, uh, uh, offensive coordinator Kyle Shanahan, who I know personally, who was my offensive coordinator in Houston, you know, it, it's a running game. It takes a lot of pressure off the quarterback, but it also opens itself up to big plays because they, they do a lot of play action, a lot of running the ball. It's that whole Gary Kubiak-style offense that uh, Denver had uh, implemented years back it's a new form of that, but Kyle Shanahan is a master at putting his offensive weapons in the right place. Yeah, and it's showing so far. Uh, Ephraim Salam, 13 years in the NFL. He's with us here on Tiki and Tierney. You know, the game tonight, the Jets and the Cardinals, I, we, we, we were talking about it a little bit earlier. BT's a big Jets fan, but obviously to come down the quarterback play, and we, we know the drama <laughs> in the offseason with, with Ryan Fitzpatrick, but there was no drama with Carson Palmer other than getting healthy. What what is what's a miss with him? Uh, that could be age and injury, man. At, at some point, when you've been injured and you get older, it's like a pitcher, right? You 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 watch a great great baseball going on right now. So when you watch pitchers, and they're like, okay, well, you know, 
he's usually an ace, but he's struggling now when this is happening. That arm strength tends to wane. The decision making t- tends to go a little bit, especially if you have if you've come back from injury. It, it just at some point, look what we saw from Peyton Manning last year, right? The year before, fantastic. Last year, who is this guy? Yeah, right. And it happened so fast. It happened so fast at the quarterback position. Look at Brett Favre. He had one of his, if not his best year ever uh, in Minnesota the year before he retired. The next year, we didn't know who that guy was. And we're, t- we're starting to see that a lot more, you know, because, number one, guys, more and more guys are playing on Sunday and on Thursday, which I, I think is really detriment to the league in terms of getting healthy and, and being prepared to play uh, at, at such a high level. So when you when you start coupling those weeks to where you can't get the necessary rest, then we start to see quarterbacks who are usually, you know, trustworthy and, and, and steadfast with the ball yeah. start making mistakes, start being off target. It all goes hand in hand in my opinion. What do you make of Odell Beckham Junior's antics? <laughs> you know what this kid Mike Hill my co host is a huge, huge uh Giants fan, and so he's so biased. It's yeah, so he forgives them, right? He and, forgives them. Uh, oh, my, I need that passion. I need 11 <laughs> other guys like that. If you had 11 other guys like that on your team, you guys would be riddled with penalties. He just can't. <laughs> He can't control him, though. Hey, and Ephraim, he they, Ephraim of, they already are riddled with penalties. They had 119 yards of penalties that, yesterday. <laughs> and, and that's the fact. And his last one when he scored the touchdown to took his helmet off, mm-hmm. that really could – I mean, like, if it was in a different situation, that could have came back and, and really haunted that team. The fact that he had such a superb game yesterday and he still can't get his emotions uh, under wraps is, is scary to me when I see that because, yes, you have the talent, but do you have the mental fortitude to be able to show your talent on the field but not hurt your team with these antics? Yeah, you like, know, I, I just I, I don't see it. Yeah, him. no, he, it's a, he just can't. He don't understand. You know, even I don't know if you've looked at their their roster, and it, but I have, and I know it well. Obviously, there's not that guy, right? You know this from being in locker rooms for yep. 13 years. It's just sometimes there's immature kids, and there's some dude that just snatches them up. Right, says this is this this is not how we do things around here. There's no guy like that on the New York Giants. It could be Eli, but it's just not his personality. So the question is, and I'm, I know you've seen guys like this because I've seen guys like this. How right. how long until he matures out of this and becomes the elite superstar? Because I think I mean he's a superstar, but there's something like holding him back from being accepted f- from everybody as a superstar. How long till he figures that out? Well, if they don't get someone in that locker room to help them, it could be it could drag on for a couple of years because the, the the thing with having early success as a young player is you don't feel like you need to correct your ability because you have all the talent and you're putting up big numbers. Yeah. So that drags on for a few more years. It it it, it it's important and like you said, it's not anybody in the locker room. Like I was that guy when I got into my ninth, tenth, eleventh year in the league, where you grab a young player, but hey, man, look, let me talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> right? Would you take him away from the facility? Hey, let's go grab a bite to eat, or once you come over to my house, watch Monday Night Football. Let's, let, you know, let's have a relationship. Let's talk and understand what it really means to be a pro. And a lot of guys don't don't know what that is. They think, okay, I'm out here performing. I'm a pro, but it doesn't go like that because the things you can do on and off that field can hurt your team in the long run. And we're seeing that with them. And Shame on Eli because he should be that guy. Yeah, yeah, he's not. He we be that guy. we know that, and he's not going to change at this point. Ephraim Salam, thirteen years, uh, not a lot of time on this Ephraim, but I want to get your take on how how you view Cam Newton. This is the second time, mm-hmm. the last one was the Super Bowl. Talk about being a pro, where he was very evasive, very short, uh, and rude with the media. And uh, you know, and I don't know if you caught what he said after the game, but it was kind of yeah. ugly. What do you think about that? You know what. And I've, I've I've had teammates like this uh, in the past. Some guys don't know how to lose. Some guys don't know how to do it. They but were they quarterbacks? Take it. Were they quarterbacks? No, that's one, no, that's very the few, thing. Very few were there quarterbacks. But let's yeah. let's be honest. Cam Newton is not your average typical cut. You know, uh, cookie cutter quarterback. Yeah. No. I mean, first of all, he's my size. Yeah. I know. And he is a different generation. And. So, but, the, but does that give you a license to not meet your requirements? 
don't think a license. Not only a license, but an explanation, though. Well, I mean, uh, and Ephraim's telling me that he's big. Who cares? I don't care if he's four foot nine. I mean, answer the questions. Yeah. But it's just a different mentality. But does that make right? it right, it, I guess, is what I'm saying. It, no, it doesn't. Okay. By any stretch of the imagination, it doesn't make it right. And the fact that they were the team that they were last year, mm-hmm. right? And and I, I, was just, I was saying this after the Super Bowl. I said, wow, these kids don't even realize that they may never get back to this stage because they kind of had like an era of like, okay, we'll, we'll get it back next year or, mm-hmm. you know, we're going to make the league pay. And I was thinking to myself, they don't realize that they may never, ever get another chance to play in the Super Bowl. It happened to me my rookie year, went all the way to the Super Bowl. Denver demolished us when oh, I was yeah. in Atlanta Falcons. Oh, yeah, the Dirty Birds, never, man. Yep. Jamal never Anderson. Saw another, yep, never saw another Super Bowl ever again. Yeah, it happened so, to me, too, Ephraim. Same thing, right. 2000, yeah. so same you thing. Understand. So, so now that realization is setting in that, oh, my God, this isn't what we thought we were going to have this year. And Cam was already uneasy with the tw- tough questions after a loss. Now it's magnified because there's not, I don't even know who this team is. This yeah. is, this is uh, you're talking about shocking goodness. Yeah, they're, they're, no they're a mess. That. It's no excuse for him not being uh, almost presidential, right? Mm. That's, cause that's how we look at our quarterbacks. We want our quarterbacks to be sort of presidential because they're the face of our franchise. They need to answer the tough questions. They need to be politically correct. And we're just not getting that from him. It's a fair assessment, buddy. Uh, nice chat, Ephraim. I'm sure we'll talk down the road. Thank you very much, Ephraim Salam, Absolutely. 13 Thank years in the NFL. Thanks, buddy. Be good, Ephraim. Uh, you too, man.